exactly sure what Nigel Wong is so upset with, but I saw Miller indicate that Lily hit him low and not in the knees. So Peabody needs to put together another lengthy drive right here on the third drive of the second half. Seven minutes and 14 seconds to play. Peabody's winning this contest 21 to 14. Very, very, very important District 14A contest. The winner of this game will have the inside track to winning the district and possibly get in a first uh, round by in the playoffs. Yeah, we're seeing some. Well, a little chippy penalty. penalty right here. I believe he's going to be on number 71. Well, I saw them both play. number 71s, possibly. Noah Allen was downfield, but number 71 came up from behind him from Humboldt. And let's see kind what the penalty is. Unsportsmanlike call uh, right. is against Humboldt, and that's going to be a 15 yard penalty. 71 for Humboldt comes up, being it's, blocked downfield, and slaps the helmet. And both of these teams have kind of lost their composure in the last few moments. Automatic first down for the Golden Tide. I've been worried about the official marking off the ball all night. He takes slow, deliberate steps like he doesn't know what he's doing. And he's gotten lost three times, and he just did it again. He just got lost again. And instead of a 15-yard penalty, we only got a 10-yard penalty. I promise you that's the third or fourth time tonight he has taken either too many steps or not enough as he's marked the ball off. Well, maybe these are replacement refs. They're replacement refs. Maybe so. Maybe he's practicing some of the new math that they're teaching. First and ten for the Golden Tide from the 32-yard line. How valuable is that? If that's against Humboldt again, <laughs> whatever Boggess is doing there, he needs to continue it. Yeah, just keep doing it and march all the way down the field. But he's got the Humboldt defensive line that time he took several a, players. That was a four-step penalty. That was a four-step penalty right there, and it's supposed to be five. That is the fifth time of this game he has done that. Four-yard penalty against Humboldt. We've invented a, a call tonight. <laughs> Bogus on the carry. He breaks free. Hold the football, young man. First down for the Golden Tide is Braxton Bogus. Takes the ball to number 22, Devarian Barnett. Carries it over the left side. Weaves his way back into the middle of the field for another food right first down for the Golden Tide. You know, we're hard on the referees, and I think for good reason, some of these calls, but this is a game that can wind up in a fight if the referees don't get things straightened out. Well, they're losing it, ain't they? Humboldt has lost all form of control. Two, three, four. No, he marked five that time. Now the crowd is cheering him as they've marched yardage for him that time. The whole crowd has noticed what's going on with this official. First down and five for Peabody. Spread formation. Tied into the left for Peabody. Barnett on the carry. He's slippery. He's loose. He's out on the edge. And he's going to have another first down, another food right first down for the Golden Tide. You know, I saw something there, number 41, I believe it is, for Humboldt ran, <laughs> ran him down from behind. Pretty impressive there. Devarian. 
Barnes got 220 yards on 21 carries. Devarin Barnett's got 21 carries for 222 yards. Key and James hadn't been able to play all year for this Humboldt Viking team, and Coach Bland is very high on this young man, and he has definitely shown some athletic ability this year for this game against Peabody. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. And that's another, or that's a good play there by Bogus. About a four-yard game. Big carry there again by Bogus. Bogus with several carries and several yards of his own. It's really been a mixture of Tavarian and Bogus. This clock continues to move down near the five minute mark in the fourth period. Barnett on the carry. Looked like a face mask right there. He spun around awfully quick in the middle. That arm was up high. Almost like a clothesline. And you can see him grabbing his his mouth there. It's a hard fought game. Third down and one. Four minutes and 38 seconds to go here in the fourth period. Pistol formation for the Golden Tide. Haven't seen that formation very much. And that's where that running back gets lined up behind the quarterback. Now he moves over to the rip formation uh, for Peabody. Coming back across is the Barnett and the ball goes on the ground and who gets it? And does Peabody get back on top of it? I don't know. Not sure how they did it, but buddy, somebody did it. And that's going to be enough for a first down. And so I'd rather be lucky than good right there. And that's where we're awfully lucky, Joey. That would have been a momentum shifter for sure. Deep breath and keep going. First down. First and 10 Peabody as they have the ball at about the 21-yard line of Humboldt. Bogus up the middle, spins and turns, and is going to have a gain of about four, maybe five on the play. Bogus loses his helmet there. He's going to have to come out for a play, I is that a, Is that a rule now in high school football when they uh, lose their apparently helmet? Apparently so. There, Najwan goes in for a play. No, that's a new rule in college ranks. Really comes at a critical time. Well, I, this is my vote. Hand the ball to Devarian. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that Najwan's not been the quarterback uh, after the first game or so this season. Four seconds to go. Two, one. Ball handed off to Devarian. And there to make the stop is number 42, as they knew exactly what he was going to do. Cornelius number Watson. Cornelius Watson comes in and makes an awfully big play for the Vikings. Very good athlete for Humboldt. Third down and long. We're getting to the same situation we had just a few minutes ago. Bogus is back into the contest at quarterback after having to go out for losing his helmet one play. Third down and 10 for Peabody. Play clock is at five seconds. There's the snap. Bogus is running and he's loose. All right, come on, get a first down. And he's gonna have the ball down pretty close to about the 10 yard line. Let's see where they mark it. It's gonna be close enough that on fourth down, I believe they're gonna have to go for it. That would be awfully close to a first down. Not sure where they're going to mark that ball. Fourth down and about uh, two. And so maybe even oh, one. This is Fourth a big and one. Call play call here. You need some points. You need some points right here. And ten points would put it out of reach for Humboldt. And I think Joe Gaddis is fixing to call timeout as the clock runs its way down. He's positioned himself right there to call timeout. And so... Coach Gaddis manages the clock as good as any high school football coach I've Absolutely. seen in a long time. And we're going to take time out with them as it's 21 to 14. Peabody's winning this game a minute and 52 seconds. It's fourth and one. Peabody's got the ball. And Coach Gaddis has called time out. We'll be back after this short break.
Hello, this is Ed Norman, broker with LA Realty of Trenton. I want to thank all of you for making LA number one in our community. We aim to take good care of our customers to the best of our ability. We know that's how a successful real estate firm operates in a small town. Please remember us when you need help or just advice about your real estate. Thanks again. Whitby Family Clinic offers the very best in primary care, specializing in pediatrics, women's health and weight loss, workman's comp, Medicare, and geriatrics. Come experience the affectionate and caring medical service at its best in a warm, home-like, cozy environment with highly trained nurse practitioners, nurses, and support staff. It has been our pleasure to serve patients in the Trenton area for the past 20 years. At Whitby Family Clinic, we know it is important that you have a medical provider you can talk to and trust. We are devoted to quality care for patients of all ages. Whitby Family Clinic, caring for a living. Oh, this can be a, a big minute one. and 52 seconds to go. This is an awfully big play. Peabody's trying to go for it. As they look Maybe back across the off. field, trying to draw them off sides. Barnett changes sides of the field. I believe Bogus is going to run this football, and he does. Mm. Mm. And Peabody's going to hold him. And the ball's going to go over on downs with a minute and 48 seconds to go. That's tough. That's tough. I knew that's what was going to happen as soon as they moved Barnett to this side because they're not going to run Barnett away from this bench. They haven't done it all night. That meant Bogus was going to run toward the bench, and that's exactly what happened. And Humboldt knew that's what was going to happen, too. Well, you've got a, an all-state candidate running back in McLilly. You've got time. A touchdown will equal things up. You needed points there. But they turned them all over. McLilly's out here at this wing back position, and he's liable to try to run the wheel route out of the backfield. He's tried to do it a couple times. He was wide open earlier in the game. And a little pass out here in the flat, and McLilly hits him right in the hands, and he drops it. And all three timeouts. Homework does. Plenty of time to move the ball down the field. Their passing game has not developed so far in this game. That's the one area that they've not been very successful at. Incomplete pass. However, it's the one area that the Peabody defense has been vulnerable up. Vulnerable to. Crowd is screaming, turn the clock on, but it was an incomplete pass. Clock doesn't run on an incomplete pass. It was at 149. Second down and 10. Montague is it in the sweep. And Montague goes down as they fake the uh, speed sweep going to the far side. And Montague drops the ball. And Humboldt calls one of their three timeouts right now. And this crowd is hollering defense, defense. Let's stay with it right here. Just watch our crowd get into this football game in behalf of the Golden Tide. Right now, one in three drivers is cruising around in a state of skepticism about just how much value their car insurance company is delivering. If you're one of them, State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton can help you get to a better state because she'll talk with you, listen to you, and help put together a policy that has you written all over it from cost to coverage, all backed by 24 7 customer support. Feeling less skeptical? Then call State Farm Agent Amy Greer in Trenton and officially get to a better state with State Farm. At Raspberry Tire, we can help you with brakes, transmission flushes, interstate battery replacement, all types of suspension repairs and alignments. We carry several major oil brands and tire brands, including Firestone and Bridgestone. 
Our service center can balance both passenger car tires and semi-truck tires and fill your tires with nitrogen. With 30 years of towing experience, we can haul small, compact cars to semi-trucks and we are the only record service in Gibson County with heavy-duty towing and recovery services. Come visit us at 2216 Highway 45 Bypass, Trenton. A minute and 36 seconds to play here in the fourth period. It's third down and 10. Speed sweep going to the far side of the field. Ray Buchanan's on the tackle. And that's gonna bring up fourth down. Well, and then there was one. One play if we can hold them. Although they do have a couple of timeouts left. It won't do them a lot of good if we hold them here. I'm not sure why the clock ever stopped right there, but Humboldt's called their second time out. And so with a minute and 20 seconds, 27 seconds to go here in the fourth period, Humboldt's called time out again. We'll take a break with them as you're watching Golden Tide football here on E Plus 6 JEA and TV 22, Trenton's local cable channel. The wheels of progress haven't been very active lately. But because of business people like you, things are beginning to get rolling. And Regions is here to help, making it easier with the expertise and service to keep those wheels turning. From business loans to cash management, we want to be your partner moving forward. So switch to Regions, and let's get going together. Rocky Top Barbecue, located at 414 East Eaton Street, allows you to eat in, carry out, or call in. Crowd favorites include loaded baked potato or tater, hamburgers and hamburger steaks, barbecue nachos, and of course, old pork barbecue. For your next party, get the shoulder pack, 17 to 20 pounds of shoulder, a gallon of baked beans, a quart of slaw, a quart of barbecue sauce, and two packs of buns for only $89.99. So come visit or call Rocky Top Barbecue at 855-0122. Okay, I want to invite you to come join us here at Food Right, where we specialize in our meat department, our produce department, our bakery daily department. A few emphasis on the meat department would be where we have signature pork, Food Right signature pork that is, no solution added, cut fresh, hand trimmed, and a product of the USA. Also in our meat department, we are proud to have Black Canyon Angus beef, the best beef there is. Also in our beef department, our chicken is packed fresh, satisfaction guaranteed. We pack it here to the store, nothing comes in pre-packaged. We're very proud of that fact. Our butchers in our meat department have over 75 to 80 years experience by cutting beef. We have ground beef and it's ground multiple times every day. In other words, it stays fresh. We can't emphasize that word enough. Fresh, fresh all over the store. Come join us at Food Right. Thank you. And the Peabody Band of Gold is getting this crowd whipped up into a frenzy as we come back. For a fourth down and 10 play, this is desperation time for Humboldt. They either convert or the ball goes over and Peabody will win this contest. Listen to the crowd. Get him right. And Peabody, the ball goes over and Peabody's going to have it first and 10 with a minute and 22 seconds. And they'll be able to run this clock out and beat Humboldt 21 to 14. But there's still a minute and 22 seconds and anything can happen. Ryan White comes up big off the corner that time. Big play. Forces a, an errant throw by the quarterback. Humboldt still. Humboldt's called their final timeout. 
And Coach Bland's out there coaching them up, telling them how they're going to go out and get this football. Saying, fellas, stay with me here. Now it's not over. Nobody has sung the alma mater just yet. <laughs> Peabody players are being huddled up around a Coach Mintz. Coach Gaddis there in the huddle. And you know this is an exciting time if you're a Peabody uh, high school football player. Things have kind of been in the doldrums for the last couple of years and here they are on the verge of being in a position of winning the District 14A championship. Well, if you had, if you had told anyone in Trenton that they would be vying for the district uh, I think it'd be hard to believe although ha have some pretty good teams uh, in the past victory formation victory formation for the Golden Tide is they're going to try to run this clock out we have a flag and a flag is called or a flag is dropped and <laughs> offsides against Humboldt as they're already swiping at the football Officials are watching close for that. What a game. What a game. And the biggest game so far in the year of the year, the Peabody defense has come up strong. The offensive. Uh, Performance has just continued what they've done all year. Flag on the play. And this one just doesn't want to end. Snapping at it again. It'd be interesting to know how many penalties Humboldt has had this second half. Second half. That's nine. Nine That's infractions nine. against... Fourteen for the game. Fourteen for the game against Humboldt. And it's not too dramatic to say that, that it, that's had a tremendous effect on this game. Yeah, I'm good about here, buddy. Yeah! <laughs> 18 seconds, and that's going to be the final snap of the game. And Peabody's going to be victorious as they come to Barker Memorial Stadium. And two old friends are going to meet at halftime out at midfield. Two friends are going to meet at midfield stripe and shake hands. Coach Joe Gaddis and Dan Bland. And Peabody's going to have the inside track to win in the district uh, championship this year. Next week, they'll be playing Greenfield. And then Halls, the final game, were Halls, then Greenfield, and uh, what a great, what a great scene for the Golden Tide fans. And we'll be down on the sidelines in a few minutes and get an interview from Coach Gaddis. Uh, but we hope to see all of you next week as the Golden Tide takes on uh, Halls and District 14A action uh, from Halls, Tennessee. And until next week, uh, we'll see you. God bless you and good night. an exciting win against Humboldt. We've got the star of the show here, Tavari and Barnett. Tavari, they've used you all year, but tonight they put the ball in your hands and said run with it, and you did it. Yeah, uh, my line told me they was going to open up holes for me, so I just hit what I could. Well, it was an exciting game. Congratulations. Thank you. Coach Joe Gaddis after an exciting win at Humboldt. Coach, everybody showed up tonight. The fans showed up. The offense showed up. 
and the defense showed up. Defense, uh, something clicked about halftime of the Union City game, and, you know, we didn't allow a touchdown or a point for six quarters, and, you know, we really allowed seven points in 47 minutes and 40 seconds. We allowed one, you know, one run on the first play of the game, but uh, our defense is really playing well right now, and, and they had to to beat a good Humboldt team. An exciting Humboldt game again this year. Uh, I like this kind of excitement when we win. Thank you, Coach. I want to thank our fans. The fans were great. Love Absolutely. Them. Thank you.